Unfortunately, UEFA's attempts at leveling the playing field somewhat via financial fair play has been a colossal failure. Their attempts to dissuade clubs from overspending to ensure that wealthy owners couldn't give certain teams an unfair advantage has had little to no effect. And with the pandemic and the suspension of the FFP regulations, the financial control is now officially dead, with something new to replace it on the horizon. So what does this mean for a club like PSG, who have been able to bring in whomever they like this summer without the financial washdog of FFP? It means that, like it or not, this is their best chance at European glory without repercussions, and it will only continue. Hey there! In this video, we'll look at PSG in a broad sense, Lionel Messi, and how FFP, or whatever the next iteration of it is called, will be influenced by none other than PSG's Nasser El Khalifi. The man is in the driving seat as far as the negotiations. This PSG side screams Galacticos at this point. The new arrivals this summer, just the new faces, we're not counting Danilo as a new player despite his deal being finalized this summer, but the new faces of Ashraf Hakimi, arguably the best right wing back in the world, Lionel Messi, arguably the best player in the world, and for some of all time, Gini Vinaldum and Sergio Ramos, at one time he was the best defender in the world, and Gigi Odonnarumma, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. I mean, they paid a fee for just one of those players, Hakimi. So let's look at this. They brought in a 22-year-old keeper who has been playing top flight football since he was about 16 and is fresh off of winning the Euros for his country with his penalty shootout heroics. He'll compete with another world-class keeper and three times Champions League winner, Kaylor Navas. That's some good depth. Sergio Ramos, once he's fit following the September international break, will give Pochettino the luxury of having to choose between him, Marquinhos, and Pernel Kimpembe if he is to go to a back four. Oh, and we can't forget the dynamic Abdou Diallo, who can play in the middle or on the left as well. Gini Vijnaldum comes off of a good Euros with the Netherlands, good for him personally, not quite for his country, and he'll give Poch another good problem to have in trying to keep Vijnaldum, Herrera, Adrisa Gai, Danilo Pereira, Leandro Paredes, and Marco Verratti all happy. And then how do you structure the attack as well or give playing time to everybody? Neymar, Draxler, Icardi, Mbappe, Sarabia, Messi, Di Maria. Again, it's a good problem to have in most respects, though the keeping everyone happy aspect will be one of the most difficult man management tasks that a manager will have to face. The squad depth is incredible, as PSG could come close to having a domestic 11 and a European 11 if they so chose. And it, it's a good thing, because injuries will undoubtedly strike them at some point. I mean, guys like Sergio Ramos have hardly played in the last year or so, and he wasn't selected for Spain, saying it was, you know, a good decision in the end, as he will be given time to fully recover, only to get injured in preseason for PSG. How much we see of him, I mean, I wouldn't expect too much. Hopefully, we're wrong in that regard. And will that translate to the rest of the squad as well? Lengthy layoffs seem to be an annual event for players like Verratti, Neymar, Di Maria, etc. But at least now they have the players to cover for those absences. When you look at the talent and the squad depth, it's hard to think of many other clubs that could match PSG at this point. Again, strictly from a talent and squad depth point of view. Chelsea clearly have a strong squad and an even stronger manager in Tuchel. You can't sleep on them. You can't sleep on Manchester City and the other top English clubs. Real Madrid could surprise us with Ancelotti. Maybe Barcelona will be able to succeed based on their attack alone. One of the Italian clubs could be strong or perhaps Bayern will rally under Nagelsmann once again. But besides Manchester City and to an extent Chelsea, none of these clubs can match PSG when it comes to being able to assemble a deep squad like PSG's. So all things are pointing toward PSG being the most likely UCL winners and opportunities will continue to arise for them. But for this season, it's as if the cosmos have aligned for PSG to win it. The weakening of other clubs, the strengthening of their own, and the death of financial fair play, which will only help them to continue to be successful if they so choose. There are those who are confused as to how PSG can pull this off, then there are those who never believed in financial fair play to begin with. And hey, that's definitely a legitimate sentiment given its complete failure to really have any sort of effect on European football. 
Well, I mean, AC Milan were banned from European football for a year. Some teams had some transfer bans, but overall, it didn't do much, and clubs have gotten away with inflating their income through sponsorship payments. With the pandemic, the precarious financial situation of many of Europe's biggest clubs was exposed. If FFP was to be in effect, then plenty of clubs would have picked up bans or some sort of punishments. So to avoid this and what would be a slew of appeals, UEFA relaxed their financial fair play regulations in response to the economic toll the pandemic had had on clubs, and now it's dead with a new iteration of financial fair play on the horizon. They're planning for that now. Well, we said in the last section that it feels as if the stars aligned for PSG to win the Champions League this season. You know what? This reign of, you know, signing massive stars could continue. Sure, there is gossip about PSG wanting to pull this off now, given their ties to Qatar, in order to help promote the 2022 World Cup, and then they'll sort of pull away from PSG after that. But if they are to stick around, the future of, you know, Galacticos at the club could continue in the absence of a financial control. Why wouldn't there be a financial control? Well, PSG's president Nasser Al Khalifi is now the head of the ECA, the European Clubs Association, who will have a direct line when it comes to negotiating terms and policies between the European clubs and UEFA. How did he get here? Well, he certainly placed himself well by being one of the first few clubs, big clubs, that abstained from joining the Florentino Perez League. <clears throat> I mean, the European Super League. Agnelli, the former chief of the ECA, was and still is a supporter of the Super League. He resigned from his ECA post when the Super League became a thing. UEFA is in a bit of a tough spot in that they need the big clubs to be on their side now, as this Super League debacle, despite being a failure, still rolls on with potential legal battles with the big three clubs that are still involved, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Juventus. Plus, with FIFA wanting to push their own massive competition, the revamping of the Club World Cup every two years, which would compete with UEFA's Champions League for being the biggest club competition in the world, would compete for advertisers, etc. UEFA find themselves in a precarious situation at the moment and will likely be at the mercy of the big clubs when it comes to negotiating how much and how they spend their money. They need these big clubs to be happy. As Sam Wallace wrote for The Telegraph on what comes after FFP, and I've linked the article below, of course, all this points towards a new era of loosening of regulation, even encouraging clubs to spend greater amounts when a luxury tax is taken into consideration rather than less. Seferin is trying to obtain emergency funding for European football, a package of up to 6 billion euros, including loans. He is not in a position to discourage the wealthiest from spending money, especially if some of it trickles down down to the hardest hit. What replaces FFP will not be a move to less spending, but more. While well, the Super League calamity has changed the political face of the game. When the music stopped in a year of betrayal and backroom deals, it is PSG and their chairman who find themselves negotiating the end of the rules that have restricted them the most. So this may be PSG's best chance and not winning the Champions League while they have one of the best players of all time, among others in their squad, would be a massive embarrassment, but the club that has thrown money toward a potential title will continue to have opportunities to do so if their president is clever with his power and negotiations with UEFA. But what do you guys think? Are PSG a sure thing for the Champions League this season or will they be their own worst enemies? Let me know in the comments guys and hey, thanks for watching this video. All of the support is super appreciated and if you're new to the channel, then do be sure to join our community by subscribing. It is free, I promise you. My name's Adrian and we'll hopefully see you in the next video. Peace.